Today we're going to be talking about Norton's Equivalent Theorem, which is basically like Thevenin's Equivalent Theorem, but instead of taking a whole bunch of power sources and resistors and turning them into a voltage source in series with a resistor, you're taking a bunch of power sources and resistors and other stuff and turning it into a current source in parallel with a resistor. And the idea here is that you can take a much more complicated circuit and simplify things. And you'll want to do this for probably one of two reasons. And the first one that pops into my mind is that you'd want to do it to simplify, um, simplify the calculations you have to do if you're doing an iteration on your, on your load. So you say, hey, I want to make my load 100 ohms. Do this huge complicated analysis. Oh, no, that's a pain. Or, because I want to do that with 200 ohms and everything changes. Well, now you don't have as complicated of a circuit as you're swapping that out. The second thing is actually that you sometimes want to use this to find out what the impedance is that your load is seeing. So you can do some impedance matching. And if you simplify this whole circuit down into one power source and one resistor, you can say, ah, I know exactly what that impedance is. And then you can match your load to it, which is obviously uh, very important with power transfer or any of your RF stuff, anything along those lines. So those are kind of the two big things that I'm aware of. And the funny thing is I've never used Norton in real life and we'll still go over it because it's still something that we need to learn about in circuits classes and who knows, maybe it's just because I've been living in a hole. But I have seen Thevenins used in real life uh, much more often than I was expecting. And frankly, I was surprised by how how it's been used to take relatively simple circuits and make them even simpler. So I always thought it'd be some crazy big circuit, simplified quite a bit, but every time I've seen it being used, it's been a relatively simple circuit made even simpler. So uh, take that as you wish, but as it is, we are just going to go over this to make sure you understand the concept and understand the steps to go through it. I've come up with a couple of different steps and they're not gonna match anybody else's steps exactly because I like to have a couple of additions, but I think that it will help quite a bit when you are going through this process yourself. So with that, let's go through these steps of how to make a more complicated circuit down into something that is a Norton equivalent circuit. So we'll go through these steps briefly and then we'll actually go through and um, do a couple of examples and they'll be pretty straightforward examples but I think it'll really help show exactly how it's done. So the first step is you want to look at your circuit. You want to identify the power sources you have. You want to identify, hey, are these current sources? Are these voltage sources? Um, am I going to need to make these open source or open circuits or short circuits later on in this analysis? Are these resistors in parallel? What is the load resistance? Where is it? What nodes are it connected to? Those sorts of things. So the first thing you want to do is you really want to familiarize yourself with the circuit so you have a better intuitive feel for what's actually going to happen and what you're going to be going through. The second thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to find that load resistor and you're going to want to create it as a short circuit. So just take that resistor out, put a short circuit, and that's going to be um, very important as you go to step three. Now step three is going to be where you take that short circuit and you do your typical circuit analysis methods to find out how much current is going through that short circuit that has replaced your load resistor. That will be what your Norton equivalent current is and that's going to actually end up in your final circuit. So that's step number three. Step number four is you're going to actually take that open circuit and or excuse me, that short circuit and replace it with an open circuit. Now in this step, you're going to want to take all of your voltage sources and make them into short circuits. And then you're gonna take all of your current sources and turn them into open circuits. And then as you take that spot where your load resistor was, you're going to look back and see what the resistance is that that resistor is seeing. So if it's something in parallel with it and series in parallel with it, you're basically looking at the nodes that are connected to your load resistor and seeing, looking back into the circuit, what that resistance is. And I feel like this is one of the least intuitive steps, and that's okay. If you don't understand it, we're going to be going through this in the examples. I feel like I'm going through this pretty quickly just to lay it out, but we'll get into it a lot more in depth when doing those samples. So then we, are, we have found the Norton equivalent current and the Norton equivalent resistance, now we need to take those and actually create our Norton equivalent circuit. There we go. That is step number five, is to create that Norton equivalent circuit using the 
current and the resistance that we've already figured out in these previous steps. And you'll create your circuit and that's when you can also, if you want to, this is where you can compare your answers to make sure that the current flowing through your load resistor is the same as it was before you did the um, transition and that's the best way to verify that you actually did it correctly. And then your final step six is just to look at it and see, does this make sense? This is where you kind of look at it and say, hey, this is, this is not what I was expecting. Why is that? Is that because I was looking at it wrong or is it because I did it wrong? And that sanity check is incredibly important. That's where I find all sorts of my mistakes. And um, hopefully you don't make as many mistakes as I do, but if you do, definitely don't skip that sanity check. All right, so now we've gone through those stick, stick, stick steps, those six steps as, uh, as quickly as we can, let's jump right into our first example where we'll take a fairly simple circuit and then we will go through these steps a little bit slower. Okay, so I've written down this circuit and now I'm gonna take a deep breath, I'm gonna slow down my speaking, I'm gonna calm it down because now we're getting into the nitty gritty. Before we just flew through the steps, now let's actually apply them. So now with this very first step, we are going to simply look at this circuit and think through things. Okay, I have my, I have a power source here, a current source of 10 milliamps, 200 ohms, 800 ohms in parallel with this 100 ohms. It doesn't explicitly say it, but I will say it, that this 100 ohms is the load resistance. So we've identified that load resistance. Again, parallel, series, current source. That means that later on that current source is going to be an open circuit uh, on a later step. Okay. I got a good feel for this now. Um, that's a lower resistance than that, so we expect more current to flow through that in general. I think we're good. So again, step number one, I've familiarized myself with this. I feel comfortable. I'm taking my time. We're good to go. So let's go on to step two, where we will actually remove this circuit, or remove this load, and put a short circuit there. So let me draw that for you. So. Step two, we have simply taken this load resistance and replaced it with a short circuit. And now, if you want, you could redraw this for step three for the analysis, but I think what we'll simply do is we will go to step three and calculate the current through this short circuit, which will give us our Norton equivalent current. So as we're looking at this, this is a 10 milliamp current source so this change in resistance isn't going to change how much current is flowing through those 200 ohms. So we have 10 milliamps flowing through the 200 ohms and then we look at it and frankly, this node right here is the same as this node right here. So we are expecting that current in its entirety to flow down this direction. So we can see just by inspection that our current, our Norton's equivalent current is going to be 10 milliamps. Looks good. Makes sense. We're expecting that. We're basically bypassing that 800 ohms because both sides of, the, of that resistor are connected together. Perfect. Let's go to step four where we will take this spot right here and replace it with an open circuit so we can find the equivalent resistance. Okay, so now I've drawn out the circuit and I have turned that short circuit into an open circuit. I've taken my current source and turned it into an open circuit. And now my goal is to, from this perspective, see what the resistance is between these two nodes. So we can see that this open circuit right here basically makes this 200 ohms go to infinity. So it's basically 800 ohms in parallel with infinite ohms, which is going to give you 800 ohms. And so from this perspective, from these two nodes looking back here, we can see that our Norton equivalent resistance is actually going to be 800 ohms, which is very simple because we only had that one resistor right there and it got completely taken out of the equation. So we have gotten the two portions that we need for our Norton equivalent circuit. So let's go to step number five and recreate this circuit as a Norton equivalent circuit. All right, for step five, I've recreated the circuit here and we basically have our 10 milliamp current source right here going over to our 800 ohm resistant, our 800 ohm 
Norton resistance, and then we have put our 100 ohm load resistor back in there. So that is our final product that if you're asked to create an equivalent circuit, that would be it. That would be all you need to do. However, this is where that really important, does this make sense? Moment come in. So six, step six is our sanity check. Now let's look at this. Basically our Norton current source is the same as our original and our resistance is the same one that was in parallel with our original load in the first place. All we did was remove these 200 ohms, which could make you think, right, that doesn't make any sense. How, how is that possible? The key here is that this is a current source, not a voltage source. If you were to calculate this out and find the, uh, excuse me, the voltage right here um, in front of this 200 ohm resistor, it would be different than the voltage here that you would see across the 800 and the 100 ohms, even though the voltage here is going to be the same as the voltage here. But because it is a current source, it will bump up the voltage to get more power dissipated through that 200, 200 ohm resistor right there. And by removing it, it simply dropped the voltage. So that's why this is one of those things you could look at it and say, oh, that can't be right. Those are the exact same values. But that makes sense because that 200 ohm resistor wasn't really affecting things anyway. Again, if this were a voltage source, it would have changed things, but it's not. So we're good to go. And um, actually, the smartest thing to do would be to stick this into LT Spice and double check it. So let's just do that really quick. Okay, so here I have the two examples. This is the original circuit, and then this is the Norton equivalent circuit down here. And we can just run this analysis really quick and then we will find the current through the original load and then through the second load. And as you can see, they are the exact same. And so that means that we did it right. So that is another great way to do the sanity check to make sure that we did everything correctly is just throw it into LT Spice really quick and say, yep, that's exactly what I wanted. And that just gives me a greater sense of comfort in terms of, yes, I did the steps right. I didn't do any dumb math errors. So perfect. Now that was a pretty simple example. Let's do a, a little bit more complicated one, nothing too crazy here, and uh, then we'll be done. And then if you have any questions, you can either just jump on Discord or put them down below and we'll answer them there. But hopefully you won't have any questions because this is actually pretty straightforward. But let me start on that second example. So this is our second example, and as you can tell, it's a little bit more complicated. We have both a voltage source and a current source in here, and other than that, it's basically the same of having that one resistor in parallel with our load resistor at 100 ohms, and I just put it to 1,000 ohms for, for fun. So number one step is looking at it and basically doing that review. We've identified the load resistor. We have this that's going to be an open when we are trying to find out the equivalent resistance, and then this is going to be a closed. Uh, we don't have anything too surprising here, but we do know that it will be quite a bit simpler when we're done. So. Let's, in step number two, rewrite this, but having that as a short circuit. So bear with me a moment as I do that. Okay, so step number two, we have taken that load resistance and we have gotten rid of it completely. Now the goal is to find out what that current is right here, and that will be our Norton current. So we know we have this one milliamp coming up right here, and we have this um, this voltage source that's going through. And we can tell, again, by inspection that since this one milliamp current source is connected on both ends through that, that our Norton current is going to at least have that portion in there. But now we need to figure this part out. And well, the 1K resistor is again connected on both sides by this resistance. So that's not gonna matter at all. So all we need to do is some simple Ohm's law here, which uh, if you've watched any of my videos, you know that I like to stick that up in the corner so I don't do anything too dumb and figure out the current through that resistance. And it'll be the current through this resistor plus this one milliamp that will give us our full Norton equivalent current. So and then we're just going to do our five volts over our 500 ohms. And that is going to give us 10 milliamps. So since we know that I n equals this current plus this current, that's going to be 10 milliamps plus one milliamp. Oh, I forgot the A there. Oops. Okay. If that's legible, I highly doubt it. 11 
milliamps. Whew, there we go. So again, we know that this voltage source is producing 10 milliamps of current that's going through this resistor and then going right back. And then this current source is creating one milliamp of current and it's just bumping it up and going right through there. So that's where we get our 11 milliamps, which is our step number three. All right, so now our next step is going to be to change this into an open circuit and to deal with these power sources accordingly. So let me get another piece of paper and rewrite that. So now on step four, we have taken our load and we've opened it up, made it into a open circuit. We've taken our current source and turned it into an open circuit. And we've taken our voltage source and turned it into a short circuit right here. So we just look at our nodes and make sure we know what we're looking at. And so from the perspective of this resistor, with this node right here, we are basically looking at this one kilo ohm resistor and this 500 ohm resistor in parallel, and that should be our Norton resistance. Now I could do that in my head, not in my head, but I could do that manually, but that is why we made these cool little tools. So let me just pop this into the circuit bread parallel equivalence calculator to make sure I don't screw it up. So we are, we are on the parallel equivalence tool, so let me just go down and just type these in really quick. 500 and then 1000. And we see that our equivalent resistance is 333.3 repeating ohms. Okay, that makes sense. Perfect. Okay, so now we have the Norton equivalent resistance and we also have the Norton equivalent current. So let's put that together in step number five. Okay, so in step five, I've recreated the circuit. Now we have a current source over here that is 11 milliamps, and we have this uh, parallel resistance, which is 333.3333 ohms, and then we have our load right here. So now we have finished completing our circuit, and again, at this point, most of the time when you're doing homework or you're doing whatever, this is all you need to turn in. But let's do our sanity check. All right, so we have the original where we have our five volt current source, and our one amp. So again, we were expecting that to be around 10 milliamps between that and this 100 ohm because compared to the 500 ohm here, this 100 ohm is not going to affect the circuit as much. So again, we are expecting something around 10 milliamps to be produced by this current source. We are expecting some to be going through there. And but anything that's going through here is actually going to be split from that one milliamp here. So uh, yeah, this, this at least roughly seems safe, uh, seems about right. This is honestly something where since it's even just a little bit more complicated, I'd rely even more on an LT spice sanity check versus just a looking at it and making sure sanity check. So let's do that. Let's jump onto LT spice. I created the, um, the circuit in there so we can compare them and make sure that we have the same values. Okay, so we have this, and again, I put the original circuit up here at the top and I put my Norton equivalent circuit down here with our 11 milliamps and 333.33 ohm resistor right here, and everything else looks good. So let's just run this and see what our current is through here, and then see what our current is through here. All right, so see that there's a little bit of a difference there. You're off by, oh, what is that? Two ten thousandths of a milliamp, something along those lines. But that is because this is 333.33 and it's technically 333.3333333. So this to me is, this is more than good enough. That to me shows that it's exactly right that we did our math right and everything looks fantastic. So our just rough sanity check and our throwing it into LT spice sanity check to me have passed with flying colors. And now we know how to create a Norton equivalent circuit. Again, I don't know how much you're gonna use this in real life, you're probably just gonna use this in school, but I've been surprised at how much I've seen the Thevenin equivalent circuit, and maybe depending on what you end up doing, you will do this all the time. I hope this really helped. If it did, give us a like, leave something in the comments to let us know that we're doing the right thing. If we did something wrong, also please leave that in the comments. Nice comments, even if they're truthful, are nice, but nice, thank you. Yeah, give this a like, subscribe to our channel, and we will catch you in the next one.